Joining us on the program tonight is Coldwater head coach Chip Auden. Coach, first of all, thanks for taking the time to be with us. Oh, thanks for having me, Patrick. I kind of enjoy these once I get on and, and uh, appreciate you guys, all the things you guys do for high school sports in our area. Always glad to be a part of it. Always glad to be a part of uh, Coldwater football and, and football in, in general. You know, take, a, take us back five months. Did you think that you would be here in terms of pretty much being able to pull together a full season? Yeah, that's that's a great question. And our kids were kind of in that in that uh, not so sure mode. And as we started in the end of May, when we were first allowed to start working out in little pods of 10, um, you know, we just we did talk about it quite a bit. Say, hey, fellas, we're just going to we're just going to do what they're asking us to do and try to follow the protocols. And of course, as the summer went on, it, it, uh, we, we were allowed to have more guys involved. And then uh, we got into practice. But even even then, even at times during July and early August, you could tell sometimes that all of us, really, even coaches were like, are we doing all this work and not even going to get a play? And and uh, certainly, you know, as it kept, kept progressing, and, and, and to be honest with you, still one of our biggest fears is that we're going to get we're going to get uh, some somebody's going to get tested and you know that we get shut down we call it, we kind of make joke around and say get the covid spray out and 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 uh, cover everybody up don't let anybody get it have there been any type of you mentioned a little bit of concerns about the possibility of spread with the numbers going up and and everything that's kind of associated with that has there been any more urgency on your part with the numbers going up the last few weeks or has it been pretty consistent throughout the season uh, for us, it's been fairly consistent. We've had a few kids in school get it. And then, of course, with the contact tracing, that knocks other kids out. So we we have done some things with preferential seating in classes with our kids sitting together. And and uh, we did shut our freshmen down after their last freshman game a couple weeks ago um, and about half of our sophomores. So so we're instead of having 80 kids in the locker room every day, we're down to 45. So, so you know, and, and – and those young guys understand we love to have them around because they're still getting to practice and and they like to be part of it. But but they, they get it. You know, they understand that with half the amount of players, you have the half the risk of, of something something bad happening. With the shortened season, what adjustments did you or your kids, your coaching staff have to make with kind of a shorter lead time before the season started and also just a shorter season in general? Yeah, uh, none really. Once once we started and we knew we had six games, it really didn't affect how we practiced and what we did, and um, so that really did not have an effect. Uh, two a days, we did we did change two a days. We went one longer practice in the morning, um, so we started like at seven thirty and got done at ten thirty. Um, and normally we we would have gone like a two hour, you know, seven thirty to nine forty five, and then eleven to one, and so obviously we eliminated all that time in between practices. So, so I guess we did lose some, lose some things, um, but we just went a little bit longer in the morning and, and then uh, got them out of there. You know, with, with cold water and not a lot of schools have this, there's sometimes they play 10 games and that's it. Uh, you guys perennially play as many as 15 games because you're almost always in the state title picture at some point. Has it has a shorter season? Even if you go to the state title game, it'll be a shorter season than what you normally have. Uh, has it made an impact on your kids? Are are you or your coaching staff or your kids a little a little fresher at all? Are they a little healthier? What has been the impact of of the shorter season of what you guys are right now? Yeah, that's a good question. I would say probably for the players, they probably they, we we are pretty healthy. We had two two really good players get hurt early in the season, a, a year ending season, but otherwise we're really really healthy right now. And I guess that would have an impact. You know, we're at week 10 here with only hopefully three more weeks, you know, three, two, really two weeks from this weekend. Um, so, so they probably do hopefully feel, feel a little bit fresher. Um, as far as the, the mental part of it, we haven't really, you know, we're just happy to be playing each week. We're, we're fortunate and happy to be playing. We, we talk about that, say, fellas, this is your last year every week for the last for the whole year, really. This is our, this is your last guarantee. You don't know what's going to happen. Take advantage of being together, uh, having fun together and getting to play. And so we're just, we're just happy to be playing. Have you seen with, with framing it that way with this could be the last game, this could be your last opportunity. Have you seen a difference in intensity from last season for some, from some of your upperclassmen? 
um, they, they, they're feeling it. I think they're feeling it. You know, of course, when you get in the playoffs, you know, it's your, it's your last guarantee, but for our guys, you know, last week, um, I think it kind of hit some of them that uh, we're playing somebody new that wasn't, that we weren't used to seeing and, 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 you know, said, fellas, this, this could be it. This could be your last home game. This could be your last game forever at game, really game nine, I guess. And so this week we talked about it again, this is their last home game for sure. And last guarantee. And, and uh, they, they really responded last week. And I think they're, they're really in tune and they're having fun. You know, some of your kids receiving all Mac honors that came out recently. Uh, you've had a lot of kids recognized, you know, first team, second team. Uh, what, where have you seen the most growth from your guys from the beginning of say when camp started to right now to heading into your most recent playoff game? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I, I think, I think, um, probably more so this senior group, the maturity over the last two or three years. We were, we were pretty concerned, I guess, a couple of years ago, probably with this group of uh, being mature enough to have leaders and guys that would, you know, they were fun guys and they're good play. We knew they were good players, but, but we weren't sure if they would have the, the, the leadership and the focus to, to really uh, move forward as, as a team. And they, they really have done a really good job throughout the summer. And, and uh, some of our guys that we weren't sure would be leaders have, either quietly or verbally or, or, you know, just by their play have, have really stepped forward. I would say that more than from, from the beginning to the end, I think we've found lots of, of guys that can play. Um, you know, one of the advantages I think hopefully we have this week is Mechanicsburg is going to play 15 kids and we're going to play 30, uh, 25 to 30. So, so we found some guys that we weren't sure that would be varsity players that have turned into really good players. So, so we're real happy about that. Mechanicsburg undefeated. That's the game you're heading into on Saturday. Uh, what what are you looking for from the Indians? This is another deep playoff run for them. Yeah, yeah, they're, they they've been in it for a long time. We've seen them play. We've seen them play Marion. We've seen them play Anna. Um, we've we, we, we've seen them in it several times. We have not played them. Um, what what I I guess what I've seen over the years is that they are they are, um, and I'm sure this comes from their coach that they are tough, hard nosed kids. They're not. Um, it seems like a few years ago they might have been bigger and stronger kids, but but these they, they have some definitely some weapons that have some speed. Three or four guys that can that can make big plays, and um, like I said, they're not as big up front um, as they've been, but but they're still tough, hard nosed guys, and and so we've got to match that, especially early because they give you they do a good job of especially their offense of giving you lots of different formations and really running similar plays, but they, they, they do some things that they, hopefully they can get you lined up in a bad spot and outnumber you and things like that. So they do a good job that way. Um, you know, we've just got to just play hard and, and hopefully we can wear them out to some degree with, with, with our numbers. Last question, Coach, before I let you go, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention this. Fast forward, looking back to five months ago, you were selected as part of the Ohio High School Football Coaches Association Hall of Fame class of 2021. Uh, first of all, congratulations. What was what was your reaction when you when you got the word? How did you get the word on that? Yeah, um, actually, Brent Fackler is our region region um, president. I, guess, I don't know if he's called a president, whatever the a region. He runs our region region nine, and he called me. And I knew I had been nominated and, and did all the paperwork, you know, all the kind of things that that you, that you do. And so I really didn't think about it um, <laughs> too much. But uh, Brent calls me one night. He says, "Hey." Congratulations. I said, what are you talking about? He says, what? You're in the Hall of Fame. So so it was exciting. You know, typically you think of of once you're retired, maybe you would, you know, you would think of maybe getting in something like that. But um, I guess it feels good. You know, I've, I've had um, so many people along the way that have that have really that I can share, um, share this honor with with coaches, players, gosh, I've coached with lots and lots and lots of different people over the years and had some great mentors. Um, that, that's really going to be what I talk about when I go there, all the, how I got to where I am. And, and, and a huge part of that was the guys that I worked for and worked with over the years. And, and of course, then um, the relationships that you build over all those years of football uh, coaching wise. And, and so you share, you share an award like this with all those people that have helped you. Well, indeed, and plenty more to share coming up with your match up against, against Mechanicsburg on Saturday, Coach. Uh, congratulations on your award, and best of luck to you on Saturday when you guys take on the Indians. Okay, thanks for having me, Patrick.